Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Advent of Code, where we go through the Advent of Code for 2022 and, you know, see if we can do every single one every single day. This time we're going to be playing Rock, Paper, Scissors, but we're going to be cheating a little bit. It looks like one of the elves has the list of answers that, or I guess the, the moves that the other elves are going to be playing in this game, and they've given you an, an encrypted code. So it looks like A is for rock, B is for paper, C is for scissors, and then We've surmised that X is for rock, Y is for paper, and Z is for scissors. Now in this input file, let's just pull that up real quick. 2,500 games of rock, paper, scissors. I don't know how they have that kind of time. But you can see that this one will be uh, scissors versus scissors, scissors versus rock. And if we, the second elf, the ZXY elf, play against the ABC elf, we want to figure out what our score will be based off of the scoring points system that they've created. So... Down here, it looks like you get the shape you selected gives you, you a point. So one for rock, two for paper, three for scissors, plus the score for the outcome of the round. Zero if you lost, three for a draw, and six if you won. So what does that mean in terms of the code? Well, we're going to be looking into conditional branching probably, and maybe we'll dip our toes into some functions just to, you know, play around with that. Let's pop over to paint and see what we can think of. So when we're playing this game, we really only care about one line at a time. And the rest of the lines don't really matter so long as we're keeping track of the score. So at the end of all of this, we'll have 2,500 numbers. That's the size of the input file. Uh, and that'll be a summation equation across those numbers. I guess we should make this a little bit different. But for the, for the sake of this, let's just leave it at that. That's what we're going to be trying to do. But at the, the micro scale, we really just need to look at A, Y, B, X, C, Z, or whatever combination we get. I think what's important first is to check if we've won, because that is one of the components of this, right? If we win, tie, or lose, we get different amounts of points. So we can quickly make a function that just says function is loss, and we'll give it X and Y, one being the opponent one being us and then we can just say if it's if it's a loss or if it's a tie or if it's draw send back that value and then we can do some sort of calculation or a summation on that we know that for each line there's going to be some sort of point increase so if you lose even if you lose you get zero points but you get the shape you selected points so every single one of these uh, will have at least plus one so somewhere else in the code there'll be some sort of plus equals uh, value line and we'll work with that at that time actually yeah we should just return the points so let's say zero if you lost and then instead of one it's three if it's a draw like that and then if it's a win we'll give six points back uh, and that'll be that part of it done check so the only other component that we need to know is what shape did we select in the first place and that is just a quick little function as well. We can easily make that and just say, like, function convert int integer. And we'll give it some value. And out will pop either a 0, or I'm sorry, not a 0. We'll start with 1. So 1 is rock. 1 equals rock. 2 equals paper. And 3 equals scissors. And that will be the return. So on the grand scale, looking at this and saying, oh, 2,500 values, that's quite a lot to think about. But on the micro scale, it looks like it's a very simple solution. So with this in mind, let's jump into the code and see if we can make something real quick and real simple. Now, I'm guessing there's going to be a part two to this that makes this harder, but at least let's build this out. All right, so I've fleshed out a little bit of the code already, just, uh, you know, to speed things up, as we did in our little drawing. We've got some sort of win-loss tie function. We've got to convert to integer for the uh, rock, paper, scissors. Let's even make that more explicit for our PC. Uh, and then there's main. I did include this. This is pretty standard in Python. You can look up what this means. But essentially, it puts main down here so that you can write main above your functions. Nothing super crazy. Uh, don't worry about it too much. Otherwise, it's just a, a way to format your code in a more readable manner. So we'll have total score at the top here. So we'll do total score equals zero. And we'll return total score at the end. Now in between each round, so we'll do, let's say, file pointer is equal to open. 
and we'll give it uh, input. Oh, geez, that's a lot of text. Input.txt, and we'll set that to read. And we can do for line and file pointer. I'm doing it slightly different from the last video, just to, you know, mix it up. This is my preferred way of doing it, but, um, you know, you got to mix it up in programming. Sometimes you'll, you'll have to do something different. So in this case, we'll have line. Let's just quickly do a line equals line dot strip, just to remove any uh, leading or trailing white space. It looks like every single line has something on it until the end. The end line will have nothing. So we can simply go with that. So we'll do that as our break case. If uh, line equals this, and it might even be this. And remembering back to yesterday, it's probably the new line character, but we did just strip it, so it's probably this. Uh, we'll break here, and we just put that in there uh, because we don't want we don't want any sort of logic to run on a blank line because the rest of our code is going to be a little bit fragile. We want to assume that our input will always be correct, which is a little bit dangerous to do, but it, we're going to do it anyways. So we know that our first input, the first character, will be the opponent's uh, attack. So let's say opponent equals line dot split, and we'll split on a white space character and choose the zero with position. And our response will be the same thing, but the one <laughs> or the first position, if you want to be more precise. Now we can start looking at our function calls. So we can actually just do total score plus equals is win, loss, or tie. And we'll give it opponent and response. Now I'm going to finish up the main code just so I don't lose my place, uh, but we'll keep it in mind that this is still a blank file or a blank function and same, uh, same with the convert. We'll just assume it's working for now. So if this is working, it'll tell us if it's a win, loss, or a score, or <laughs> win, loss, or tie. And then we want to add another line. So total score plus equals uh, convert in, to integer for our PC, and we'll send our response into that. So these two lines of code will run every single line until the end, and this uh, summates the values per line, or summates the points per round of rock, paper, scissors. Now, we still need to do the logic of the code, so let's jump into here and say, okay, so if... Mm. This is where it gets a little more complicated because we have, what, six different possibilities? You can have rock and paper, rock and scissors, scissors and paper, scissors and rock and paper and rock and paper and scissors. And each one could be a win, loss, or tie. Now we can make that a little bit simpler and we say if opponent equals response, uh, this is the tie case. So let's just say tie return the draw value, which is three. That covers two, or sorry, three of the six cases, which is pretty good. What we could do, and this, this is just getting a little cheesy to make it easier for myself, convert response to opponent. That might be an actually a good, a good idea. So if response is equal to x return, a. So then we can say response is equal to convert response to opponent. Give it the line value. And now we have the same value. So now it's uh, A, B, or C. And then down here, converted to A, B, or C from X, Y, Z. So now they're the same, we can use uh, the comparisons that we started down here. So there's our win cases, A to B, B to C, and C to A. In all other cases, we want to return zero because those are the losses. So now we have the logic for wins, losses, and ties. Now the only thing left to do is to convert the RPC to a value, which now that they're all the same, it's actually kind of simple. So we'll just do that. Say if value is equal to A, return one, E with value equals B, return two, and then we can just use the return statement at the end for the third case. 
So let's look at the code. So we're taking in the entire file one line at a time, stripping it so that it's just one character. If it's the empty line, so the end of the file, we break. Uh, we don't want to run any of this. We could even flip this around so if it's not this, then we run this. That's my, that's actually cleaner. So if it's not this, then we want to run this code. And once that is done, we return the total score. Now, because the return isn't actually returning anywhere, we'll just print it out as well. Uh, if this was some sort of intermediary function, you would want to return the total score, but we'll just print the total score to the screen. All right, let's see how we did. Let me open up a terminal and we'll go from there. Let's just run Python 3 solution.py 15,572. Now, we did have that check at the start, right? So there are... 2,500 lines in this file. So if it was all losses and we only chose rock, the minimum we'd have is 2,500 and the maximum would be all wins, which would be eight times 2,500. So 20,000, if I did the math quickly, eight times 2,500 is 5,000 times four, 10,000 by two, yeah, 20,000. So it doesn't make sense that our cheating elf gets 15,500. That's about a 75% win rate. I think so. I think uh, if you were going to cheat and you didn't want to get caught, a 75% win rate makes sense. So let's copy this and go to the website. Hopefully when we hit submit, we get the right answer. Excellent. First try. So it looks like the elves finish helping with the tent and sneaks back over to you. And he says, anyway, the second column says how the round needs to end. X means you need to lose. Y means you need to end the round in a draw. And Z means you need to win. Aha! So the total score is still calculated the same way, but instead of X, Y, and Z, meaning A, B, or C, I guess, in our last example, they mean win, lose, or tie. Okay, so we need to just convert our code a little bit. Now, I betcha if we wanted to, let's, let's try and not modify our code too much. Let's build this uh, intermediary function where we convert to what the elf told us was the actual answer to this, this riddle code that he made. And let's see if we win more uh, or less. So let's say, let's do the easy one first. If, if, if it's a tie, the one that will be easy is if response is equal to uh, y, we can just output return opponent. So we want to make our response the same as the opponent. That's the tie case. Now, if we're supposed to lose, then we want to do some sort of logic to see what the loss cases are. Now you can see if I converted these to numbers, it would be a little more or a little less confusing to just kind of do a greater than or less than and move the numbers along. If I needed to do a loss, then I would just say uh, return opponent minus one. Now it wouldn't work for the return C case. You'd have to do some special logic for that. But for B, you just say return two minus one or return three minus one. It's always easy if it's an integer, uh, but because we're using strings, it's a little bit more convoluted. Okay, so let's look at our code. So we take in the input lines, it'll be A, B, or C, and then, you know, the X, Y, Z. We don't convert. Instead, we convert to win, loss, or tie and response has changed. So the response will become either C, A, or B. Very similar to what we did in the first one, but now we can do this comparison in is win, loss, or tie based off of A's and B's. And then, you know, of course, we do the same thing for converts. Okay, let's see how this works out. I think we've got a winner. So let's run it again, and we'll get a slightly different answer. Aha, uh -huh, response. Reference before assignment. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Line 19. Comment that out. But we'll just remove this part. So we're just getting a line dot split at zero. And we'll just update this so it says X, Y, or Z. There we go. Let's give it a run. 16,098. So we're actually doing better, maybe. Uh, hopefully this is the right answer. So we'll open up the window, see if we got the right answer. There we go. Now, I don't think I did it fast enough. It's uh, 12.58 a.m. right now, so I do need to go to bed now. But let's see the leaderboard. I betcha I didn't make it on for today. 
yeah, it looks like I had to be first hundred users get the first star on day two. I had to be here within the first six minutes. Okay. Um, I don't think I'll be able to win this <laughs> ever uh, because, you know, I like to explain this to people. So interesting that uh, that we did it very quickly, but still, uh, I don't think we're going to be the first hundred users ever. But that's fine. If it helps you, if it helps you learn, that's why I'm here. So thanks so much for watching. If you like this stuff, make sure to subscribe. Uh, we'll be doing this one a day for the next 24 days or 23 days now. Past that, I guess I will see you tomorrow and see you in the next one.